Thank you for your purchase of the iCam from OptiView. iCam is a 45 degree non midriatic camera. This is an instructional video, which is intended to be used in conjunction with the users and install manuals. The video will be divided into three parts. The first is the description of the iCam and its features. Second, how to start the software, enter patient information, and capture an image. Third, how to modify an image once captured. Part 1. Features. The camera sits on the joystick mount and chin rest assembly referred to as iBase. The iCam is connected to the computer, a power supply, and the iBase. It should be mounted on a table capable of raising and lowering. The chin rest plate should be screwed securely to the table to prevent displacement. Once mounted, the locking screw on the iCam should be securely tightened. The iCam has four connections. Two USB connected to the computer. One connection to the medical grade power supply, which can be located in the bracket and plugged into the table column. And a final connection to the iBase cable, which provides power for the external fixation. Please refer to the install manual for further detail. Turn the camera on. When on, the switch will light up. Starting at the top of the camera, there is the viewing illumination knob, which is adjustable from 1 to 12. This controls the infrared illumination of the retinal image that the operator sees on the computer screen and illuminates the fixation patterns for the patient. If you select the cornea button in the software display, this knob now controls the intensity of the three external LED lights also with a range of 1 to 12. Both of these functions can also be controlled using the mouse and screen display. The next control knob down is the flash intensity setting with a range from 1 to 12. This can also be controlled by using the mouse and flash level selections on the computer screen. The diopter compensation selector is used to select the type of photography. Starting with the selector pulled all the way out is C. This is for cornea or external imaging and is meant to be used in conjunction with the three external LED lights. It allows for close-up imaging of the external features of the eye. Next is PLUS. This is for retinal imaging of high hyperopes plus 5 to plus 30 diopters. It can also be used for external imaging using the internal flash as illumination. This results in the capture of an external image with the red reflection off the retina showing in the pupil. The zero is for retinal capture of the most common range of patients, negative 15 to plus 10 diopters. Lastly, the minus is for the retinal capture of high myopes, negative 35 to negative 10 diopter range. The last of the controls on the camera is the large blue knob which controls the split focus. The computer screen has a final control. The focus illumination controls the intensity of the split focus projection. Now let's look at the fixation pattern. The fixation pattern of the iCam has six objects which are as follows. A large black circle in the center, bisected by the focal bars, contains a triangle for macular imaging of the right eye and a circle for macular imaging of the left eye. To obtain optic nerve images, use the square for the right eye and the diamond for the left. It may be beneficial to show the patient the fixation card and point out the shapes prior to imaging. There are two ovals, one for superior and the other for inferior. Any other locations of interest can be achieved by using the external fixation. Now that we have covered the features of the equipment, let's proceed to image capture. Part 2. Patient Information and Image Capture First, we will capture a macular image, then an optic nerve, an external image with red reflex, and lastly an external corneal image using the front LEDs. Click on Add New Patient. Enter last name. Enter first name. Enter gender. Enter date of birth. Enter ethnicity. Then select Capture. If the patient is already entered, click Search or Show All. Click on the name and select Capture. Macular Image Capture. This should be done in a darkened room to allow natural dilation. Start with the eye that is of greatest concern as the flash may cause some reactive constriction of the fellow pupil. Show the patient the fixation pattern card and tell them where you want them to look.
pull the camera all the way back and position the patient in the chin rest with a canthus marker at eye level. Ensure the diopter compensation selector is set to the appropriate diopter setting, the zero sign for this patient. Once the patient is positioned, dim the lights. Using the mouse, select right or left eye. Flash settings are based on the pigmentation of the eye and pupil size. Blue or light-eyed patients should be approximately three to four, four to five for people with mid-brown eyes and darker eyes, and use five and up based on experience. If right-handed, push forward on the eye base with the left hand and control the joystick with the right. Keep the joystick vertical so that fine motion is possible. As you push forward, align with the iris and pupil. As soon as the split focus is visible in the pupil, align the two focus bars to form a single line. If the focus bars are too dim or too bright, adjust using the mouse and the focus illumination control on the computer screen. If the retinal image is too bright or too dark, adjust using the viewing illumination knob on the camera head or with the mouse. Continue to push forward. Use the joystick to keep the camera centered. Rotate the joystick to make the camera go up or down and tilt the joystick to move the camera left and right. Verbally coach the patient on fixation as you move in with the camera. In this case, asking them to look at the triangle to capture the macula of the right eye. As you visually enter the eye, you will begin to see the retina appear inside the pupil. Continue forward watching for the working distance indicators referred to as WDI. These will appear as two blurry white dots which will become visible as the retina fills the screen. They will become sharper as you press forward. If you go too far forward, they will become unfocused and disappear. If this happens, pull back, then come forward again. As they become visible, align the sharp white dots on the blue line, spacing the white dots equally from each side. If you are unable to see the WDI, pull back out of the eye, ensure that you are centered, and push forward again slowly. If you are off-center, you may only see one WDI. If this happens, it means you are near the correct working distance, but not centered. If the dots are too high or too low, adjust it by turning the joystick. If there is a single dot located centrally, Locate the other WDI by moving the joystick left or right until both dots appear. Once you have the camera and eye aligned, ask the patient to blink once to provide good tear film, then capture using the button on the joystick, or by using the mouse. If satisfactory, select Save, or click Discard and try again. It is recommended to wait until the pupil has recovered before attempting another image. Repeat for the other eye once it has recovered and the retina is visible. Note, mosaic. If compiling shots for a mosaic, shoot the peripheral shots first and end with the macular image. Optic nerve head capture. The following demonstrates how to capture optic nerve images. Repeat the steps listed previously for macular images, but have the patient fixate on the outer symbols, square for the right eye and diamond for the left. Select the eye. Push forward, find the pupil, and focus. Continue forward until the WDI appear. Ensure the optic nerve is central, coaching the patient if necessary. Ensure the working distance indicators are aligned and sharp. Ask the patient to blink. Capture the image with the joystick. Evaluate and save. Capturing external images that show the red reflection of the retina. The capture of an external image with red reflection is dependent on the crystalline lens. Cataracts can block the reflection from the retina. First, select the eye. Next, move the diopter compensation selector to the plus sign and turn the focus knob all the way in the plus direction. Push forward until the exterior of the eye comes into focus. Check flash setting. 5 is a good setting to start. It can be adjusted until the desired image is achieved. Make sure the patient is looking directly into the camera. The IR image inside the pupil will be brighter when the patient is correctly aligned. Ask the patient to blink, 
and capture the image. Evaluate and save. Close external imaging using the three external LEDs. For the next type of external image, move the diopter compensation selector to the C marker. Select the eye. Ask the patient to look at the external fixation light. Select the cornea button. Move the focus knob all the way in the plus direction. This will allow the operator to reach the closest focus position for capturing the external anatomy. To image a larger area, move the focus knob back toward zero while adjusting accordingly with the joystick. Push forward until the exterior of the eye comes into focus. Adjust the external LED using the upper control knob or the software. The LED will flash at capture. The lower the LED setting, the lower the flash intensity. Once the operator is satisfied with the focus and illumination, capture the image, evaluate and save. Part 3. Image Review and Adjustment Select Review from the tabs on the left side of the screen. In Review mode, the images are displayed on the right, from first to last, with the last image taken being displayed on the central screen. Multi-image controls are at the top of the screen. These controls determine the number of images displayed. Select the number of images from 1 to 6. Note in the multiple display format, not all functions are available. The buttons will gray out. The multi-image format can be used to compare left and right optic nerves. Lower right controls. Use the up and down arrow buttons to scroll through the selected images. The check and uncheck buttons allow you to select or deselect all images. Individual images can be selected or deselected by clicking the box next to the image. The print button sends the image to the print function and the camera button opens a field that allows a PDF named with patient information to be saved to a folder of the operator's choice. Tools. The tools located on the left side of the screen are used for image modification. Hover the mouse over the button. It will display the title. The sharpen button increases the intensity of the image. Click once and review results. Repeat if desired. The Undo button reverses any modification one step at a time. The image can also be viewed in a computer-derived red-free version. The Magnifying Glass button allows the drawing of a box and fills the screen with the contents outlined by the box. The scroll wheel on the mouse can be used to enlarge or reduce the entire image. The hand allows the image to be moved to show the areas of interest when the image is zoomed. The Fit button returns the image to the original size. The button with the A allows annotation. Select the button, then start typing. The finished text box can be dragged to any location. Right-click to remove. The Reset button returns the image to its original form. The red circle can be used to mark an area of interest. The CD button starts the process to draw the cup and disc. The two sliding scales below are contrast and brightness. Recommendation of order to review an image. Step 1. If more definition is desired, click Sharpen. If results are preferred, proceed or undo. To evaluate the contrast, click the Contrast button one to the right. Continue as long as improvement is seen. Click back if the image deteriorates. If the image is too dark or too light, use the brightness to modify the image. Once you have the desired effects, right-click on the image and save it. This image will replace the original image. For some pathology, a red free style image may provide better visualization. This can also be adjusted using the tools and save. Saving makes a new image that has the same patient information, but is saved with a timestamp one tenth of a second after the original image to establish a new file name. 
To draw the optic nerve, enlarge the image of the optic nerve by outlining it with the magnification tool or by clicking and rotating the mouse wheel until it is the size you desire. Select the CD button. Then starting at the top, outline the disc by clicking sequentially around the rim. Then double click to finish. Outline the cup using the indicators such as coloration, cupping is usually paler, and shape of the blood vessels. Bends and disappearing vessels may indicate the edge of the cup. Double click to complete the circle. Return the image to the original size using the mouse wheel or the fit image button. The cup to disc information will be displayed on the screen. Thank you for your attention during this video. If you have further questions, please refer to your user's manual.